Welcome back to the Lifeline Subi job. Yeah, this one got dropped off, barely made it here on battery power, alternators fried. But this video, I mean, yeah, it's going to be an alternator job, but this video is going to be more about what kills alternators and how to stop this. Anyway, what we got here is a 99 Subaru Forester 2.5, or EJ 2.5. Battery's dead, we've been charging it for a bit, it's still got five hours. And I'm going to tell you something, if you got alternator battery problems, you know, you got to get the stuff under control because warranties will not be covered, especially O'Reilly's will not cover a warranty on a dead battery job. And that's what we got going on here. So, you know, normally I would show you tests, show you some things, but unfortunately on this job, at times it's the issue, and pretty much this battery's got to be charged before we turn the key on a fresh alternator. So stay tuned. Alright, you gotta run now. Much testing needed there, definitely dead. Alright, we're gonna rip it out and then do some more tests. Alright, shut it off, gotta get the lifeline back. And these battery cables, I suspect, are part of the problem. We know the alternator's dead, but there's a reason why it died. Alternators just don't die. Unless it's a GM. <laughs> this is a Subaru. But first things first, get your cables dealt with. You want to make sure these are clean. We're going to go through and deal with those. But first, got to get the battery charged. I can't do anything else without a good battery. And someone stripped that one out. Lovely. What well, used to be a 10, now will hopefully be a 9. Yep, someone did something they weren't supposed to. Well, on this one we're going to have to pull the cable here and I'll have to work on that in the shop. So it's nice with these Subarus, you can kind of do some tricks here, but first off, this battery got to get full. We're going to take this to the shop now. Alright, so the reason why I wanted to take the battery out is to get to this. This at one time was a 10 millimeter bolt, but uh, unfortunately trying to use the wrong tools for the job, they stripped it. So I got a 3 8 on it, hopefully we'll be able to get it off. All this stuff has to be clean. You have to have a good way for your alternator to know how charged or decharged the battery is. Old concept in the 40s was called pressure, but this battery put pressure, what we call voltage today. And once the alternator says, okay, battery's a little low, I'm going to give it full charge. But then on the flip side, once the battery says I'm full, the alternator starts to cut back power. But once you get into this cycle of bad cables, Neither one can talk to each other and both end up dying. This is a recent battery. It was a 7 of 16. So this piece we're going to throw in the parts washer and see if we can't uh, salvage it. It doesn't look too bad. It definitely needs cleaned. definitely adds to the mystery of why this alternator died. But I can tell you right now, resistance in the wires plus bad cables equals dead alternator. Before I put this battery and this other Subaru I got to sit in here to charge it up. I want to get it clean. As you can see we have some leakage of battery acid which is normal but this battery acid can also cause this battery to die well before its time and it came in here pretty much dead. A little simple green, a little rag, keep it simple. That's all you need to do. There are cleaners and stuff for this but I just like good old-fashioned simple green because it's all natural for the most part. It doesn't leave a bunch of weird residue after you're done cleaning it. 
But I will tell you this much, no auto parts store will warranty an alternator if your battery is not at least 12.6. And this isn't complicated maintenance. Anybody can do this. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, or what you are. You know, batteries, if they stay clean, will last a long time. But you let things go to dirt and let natural acids and the elements get to it. I mean, you'll be buying batteries every two years and can't figure out why. It's not because you bought shitty batteries. You got something going on in your system that's creating battery death. All right, it's clean enough to go in our Subaru. We'll work on it a little bit later. Time of the essence, so let's roll the Subi. Now most battery chargers you want to hook it up to ground, you want a solid ground. Uh, engine compartment is pretty good for anything in here it's attached to the engine, like front bracket, intake manifold. Don't use gas lines, uh, it don't work very good, but other than that, let's battery charge. It's probably going to take four or five hours, but we got to get the other car done. And then right before we hand this back, put the battery in, fully charged, good to go. Thank you, have a nice day. Ooh. What was that? Me trying to find a good ground? <laughs> yeah, don't burn up the garage now. Nah, it's just DC. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the other Subaru. After you have disconnected your battery, whether you take it out to charge it or just disconnect it, make sure you disconnect it. We've already done that check. Next thing, we're going to get these covers out of the way. Then we got to get the belt out of the way. Most of this is going to be 10 and 12 mil. Now these fasteners are really small, so you want to keep them in a safe place. Some of this might be a little rusty. I'm not trying to pull all this stuff apart. I like to keep my teardown as simple as possible. We'll roll that out of the way. Good to go. Next cover, this one. Now some Subarus, some people probably already ripped them off. But if you have them, I like to put them back. Some of these have washers, you gotta be careful. That one comes right up. Before you undo this bolt right here, you actually have to unloosen a bolt underneath here. Or you'll end up snapping that bolt. And it's a 12. That's got to come out. And as you can see, we can move it now. Next bowl I'm going to take is this one. Speed tools are nice, but you don't want to use them on delicate electronics. That's for sure. Okay, get that guy out of the way. We're going to unplug the regulator next. All right, last two remaining belt bolts. Get the belt out of the way here. Okay, so this bolt goes, and the tensioner bolt will have to go. Try not to drop it like I did. Take the weight off, it does help. Take the bolt and grab that. Tie them both up so you don't lose which one goes where. 
Okay, and then I'll grab that one that dropped. That's the lock down below. Now we can pull this alternator out. Sounds a little crispy. All right, let's go to O'Reilly's. We're gonna have them tested and get a new one.